You're listening to the Screen Team on 930 KWOC. Are you okay? I'm sorry, Dave. I'm afraid I can't do that. I'm going to make him an offer he can't refuse. Toto, I have a feeling we're not in Kansas anymore. To infinity and beyond! Surely you can't be serious. I am serious. And don't call me Shirley. Please, what does it always mean? This is Junior. That's his name. Henry Jones Junior. Like Indiana. We named the dog Indiana. Frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. I am your father. My mom always said life was like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. Bond. James Bond. And now the screen team on News Radio 930 KWOC. Hey, what's going on? It's the screen team on today's talk 930 KWOC and 93.3 FM. Screen team is all brought to you by Whitworth Gift Chest Jewelers, Popper Bluff Drywall, and also 33 Productions. We've got Sabrina J joining us again. Sabrina, you look very, very nice. Why, thank you. You always look nice. I, I got out of the house today. You did? I did. Well, good, man. <laughs> I appreciate you leaving me alone with Luke the entire day. Thanks. What can I say? <laughs> We're being joined by a first-time screen teamer, Maisha. Maisha, how are you today? I'm great, and you have not been alone with Luke all day. That has been my job, sir. You know what? <laughs> you don't know, all right? This is theater of mine, and we're telling people that I was alone with Luke all day. I know day. you've had a hard day. <laughs> <laughs> Maisha's is a good friend of ours, and Maisha also watches our little boy, Luke, on a regular basis. She does a great, great job, right, Sabrina? Yes, she does. And uh, what we didn't know at first was she's a she's a big movie lover. I know. She's a very opinionated movie lover. Yes, she is. She <laughs> loves the movies. She loves the movies. And her brother is one of our screen teamers as well. Yeah. K-Rob. Kyle, if you will. He's, yep. a, he's a screen teamer, too. So uh, well, whenever, whenever we have someone come on for the first time, we have them pick the movies. And Maisha, uh, what movies do we have for, for our listeners today? We have V for Vendetta, we have The Invention of Lying, and Lackawanna Blues, my personal favorite. Well, can we start with that one first? Uh, absolutely. All right, Lackawanna Blues is a, uh, it was a, it's actually a play. Yes. It was actually uh, like a one-man play, uh, which was uh, written by Ruben Santiago Hudson, and it was made into a TV movie that aired on HBO. And uh, this movie is set um, like in the 50s or 60s, correct? It's actually the late 50s into the early 60s. And it's located in Lackawanna, New York, correct? Yes. So what's, what's the basic uh, story of, of, of uh, this movie? Well, the base storyline is a young man, Ruben Santiago, his character is portrayed as a... From, I think he's about from the time he's born, actually. Mm-hmm. And uh, he grows up in a boarding house. And everyone calls this woman that runs it Nanny. Nanny. And it's a, quite a plethora of colorful characters. Oh, I mean, what kind of people do we have in this in this oh, boarding house, man? Goodness. We got. <laughs> oh, goodness. What kind of people? Well, you have. Um, I have to talk about one that meant a lot to me. He okay. has schizophrenia. Schizophrenia, mm-hmm. and they uh, call him change. And he also had the keys. A ton of. Oh, I mean, yeah, huge, yeah. Huge That's what ring. calmed him down was, yes. was the keys. Exactly. And there was a poignant point in the movie when they were in the kitchen, and he was losing it. Mm-hmm. I mean, he was absolutely losing his mind. And Nanny comes in the kitchen and makes sure that he gets his keys and cooks them all something to eat because everybody is terrified. No one's ever seen him absolutely lose his mind before, which I guess you can't really say he lost his mind because I don't think he really ever had it. Right. Um but I thought that that moment spoke to the strength that she had and mm-hmm. the strength that everybody drew from her because no one else could deal with him at that moment other than her. And um, he had to be one of my favorite characters, even though his role was very small, mm-hmm. because it just really demonstrated to me how how hard of a woman that she had to be. It really accented her strengths as yes, a character. Absolutely. And then in this case, a real person. Yes. <laughs> Yes, I mean, I couldn't imagine having all of these different characters. You had the gentleman that had killed a man, um, and he had to keep keep the young boy um, one evening when everyone went out to... I like to say they're speakeasies, but <laughs> that's not necessarily what they were called in the 50s and the 60s. Dance but, halls, I guess. I mean, I don't know what else well, to... I, 
I'll tell you what, that music was jumping in that movie. It was very good. It was uh, like a mixture of blues and jazz and, and swing. And it's, uh, I love those scenes in particular in this movie because uh, the production design was awesome. They were very colorful, um, very fun. The music was great. Everybody was having a good time dancing and carousing. And, and those were probably some of the funnest scenes in the movie were the. They the certainly didn't ones. hold back. No, they sure didn't. No, they didn't, but I did like it because the, even the the sex, there was no outward sex. I mean, it was implied. There was definitely right. a lot of sensuality. Mm-hmm. And um, I like that because there was a young boy growing up in this boarding house. And so even though people did step outside of what their values, what they knew, they still held true to them when they were around this little boy. Mm-hmm. And I really did like that. I mean... It, it kind of encompassed it takes a village to raise a child mm-hmm. um, for the whole movie. And I think in this case, um, we're, we're, we're given an inside look at a young boy, a child, um, who is, cl- in the beginning, clueless to mm-hmm. the situation that's he, that he's in. And then as a young schoolboy is asked by a social worker, do you want to leave? Do you want to live somewhere better? Yeah. And he's like, no, I want to live here. I learn stuff, you know, and he's learning from all of the people that live there, not just from his nana. Yeah. Uh, he is adopted, in, in a sense. He is. And, thankfully, and uh, it's just, um, it, you just get so much character from all of the individuals that are there that um, it's like, I, I just envisioned, like, this one of those little pop-open calendars that we get at Christmas time, you know, where you just pop open a door and you, le- you learn something and you get yeah. a treat. Well, it was like that with all those people. Like, you learn something different, and every person, every room that she rented out had something totally different inside it uh, within the persons that lived there. And yet they all respected each other. And even when they were trying to slit each other's throats, they were respecting <laughs> each other the next day. It, it's just, it, it's <laughs> not your... You're literally. <laughs> it's not a common, traditional white picket fence environment. It wasn't, and it's not white picket fence characters, people. But yet, at the same time, a good man came from all of that exposure. Yes, because of that woman. Exactly. And that real life man is a, a real life actor and uh, writer and mm-hmm. uh, very, very successful, uh, uh, very successful man. So uh, you can tell that uh, nanny raised him. Raise him right. And how else do we know this young man? How else do we know him? Yeah, character-wise. Place, movies, TV shows, what's he in? Oh, he was in Amer- American Gangster. He was in Castle. He certainly was, uh, he was American in American Gangster. He was in The Adventure of Lying, which we're going to uh, be reviewing later on in the show. So he's 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 mainly a character actor. He's not like a, you know, uh, Nicolas Cage or, no you know. Denzel. No Denzel. But uh, <laughs> right. if you see him, you're like, oh, yeah, I remember that guy kind mm-hmm. of thing. So. Uh, I enjoyed this movie a lot, man. I really, really did. The acting is superb. Like I said before, the production design was uh, very, very well done. Um, acting was great. And uh, overall, just the, the heart of the story, you really care about these actors and, and uh, you really want to see them uh, do well. And even when the social worker comes in, you're like, no, he needs to, he needs to, stay, with, he needs to stay with them. You, know? you, you, you feel for him and, uh, and uh, you want to see him do well. It uh, puts your judgment in check. It really does. Uh, because, you know, outside of this movie, I would have, I confessed, I, I would have been much more judgmental living across the street from that boarding house than right. I was watching it from inside as, as the movie right. made me check that. Right. I will <laughs> say one thing. You know me. I'm always, always got to throw in some sort of negative in there. So I'm going to do that. Why, for the love of God, is Macy Gray in this movie? <laughs> <laughs> I despise Macy Gray. You despise are not alone her. on the dis- oh, despising my Macy goodness. Gray. Um, her voice is like nails on a chalkboard <laughs> to me. It, it really is. And I don't think that she plays a character. She has not played a character yet. And she's been in three movies mm-hmm. that I have been like, you know what? I just really like her in this movie. <laughs> I just didn't care. She yeah. was in Idlewild, and I did not yeah. care for her in that either. I didn't care for her in this movie, but, <laughs> but I, she's not... But you didn't care for her character either. So. That's true. Her character That's true. was not a good person. Um, the cast is is amazing. You know, top of the notch people: Jimmy Smith, uh, Terrence Howard, who plays uh, Uncle Bill. You have uh, Louis Gossett Jr. You've got Rosie Perez. You got Ernie Hudson. You got uh, Jeffrey Wright. Um, just uh, a, a great, uh, great overall cast, man. So give it a chance. You can find it on DVD. It's called Lackawanna Blues. Coming up after the break, we're going to review V for Vendetta. It's up next on today's talk, 930 KWOC.